So today's talk would be on designing great efficient coded quantum networks. Um, and when this topic came about, uh, you know, as to, as to which topic I would like to choose, because we have many interesting quotes uh, that were within our group, you know, quantum quotes in time assisted. So I thought maybe I'll talk uh, with the theme of uh, quantum coded quantum networks and from this perspective. So the topical contents uh, in today's talk would be a brief introduction. Um, I'll talk about uh, coded quantum network, particularly ideas behind coded quantum networks towards node failure recovery, which could be an interesting problem. I talk about the nature of errors and, and the formalism, how we approach solving this problem, recovery using stabilizer codes. Um, and then I will walk you through the node recovery process through modified graph state codes, which are local codes, and how we go, go ahead building these modified graph state codes. I'll present some examples of rate half code over a graph, something that is rate two thirds uh, that can um, that is uh, that is optimal and 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 and, uh, and we talk about rate optimality properties and asymptotically how we can get to almost near rate one um, such modified graph state codes uh, that can recover a single error and see how this could be used for. Uh, the setup can be used for generalizing um, in general for recovering nodes using such uh, graph state, uh, modified graph state codes. Okay, so this is a joint work uh, with my student, uh, Yanad Karni and uh, Ankur Raina. So um, it's a very small group that we have, and uh, both of my students uh, have defended, they graduated, and uh, um, yeah, he's on the lookout for a job. Okay, so let me briefly motivate um, what is this coded, um, uh, you know, from coded uh, networks um, perspective. I mean, when we broadly think about uh, networks, uh, we think about communicating a quantum state from one node to the other node via these uh, quantum repeaters. And you could have classical links, you could have links which are quantum links, essentially through entangled, uh, entangled you know, that you could share entanglement across. And with entanglement swapping, you can essentially, you know, communicate from one node to the other. That's a sort of um, a, a common setup one can think of. But if you think from a broad perspective, um, you know, the whole thing is a network system. Uh, you have a bunch of nodes. You could have an arbitrary network topology, and these nodes can also be uh, connected to quantum computers, possibly with superconducting qubits. And you can have a quantum satellite, and that's a true picture of a quantum internet system, which is, in, in, in a broad sense, a quantum network. And we're interested in how entanglement can help in this uh, in this process, in this setup. So the fundamental uh, ingredients are uh, generation of entangled pairs, graph states, in this case, nodes and links, graph topology, quantum measurements, resilience to node failures, uh, which requires error correction, the stabilizer codes and, and variations. And uh, I mean, the variants are also stabilizer codes and scalability for arbitrary node, node sizes. So what is your motivation to uh, code it quantum networks? So imagine that quantum information is distributed across the nodes of a network and each node stores a qubit of information, right? So this is like, for example, the way we think about a distributed uh, um, you know, coding, which involves, uh, you know, data storage as well as networking, where you can, your file is shared across several nodes, and then you can, you can, even if a node fails, you can kind of recover this, this information, right? And this has sort of the parallel here, but within the quantum setup. So quantum information, we want it to be distributed across the nodes of a network, and each node stores a qubit of information, and we want resilience to node failures due to loss of qubits under physical conditions because the qubit would escape out of the cavity and, and stuff like this. And you want to kind of detect these, these losses and then recover uh, the quantum information we are coding. And what makes things difficult in quantum setup? It is because of the clone theorem. We cannot clone these states and you know there are these no-go theorems. And in general, it's difficult uh, to work uh, uh, with, with these constraints, uh, unlike the classical case, and this makes it interesting and uh, and also challenging uh, within the quantum setup. 
So the early works uh, in this area were uh, by Grassley et al. Uh, way back in 1997, possibly I was in my undergrad at the time. So he proposed an interesting four qubit quantum erasure code that protects against um, uh, qubit erasure. And this involves basically transforming the qubit to a different state at a known location. When we talk about erasure codes, we, we mean that the location is known. And Lou um, et al., they, they, they verified these experimentally. However, what is required is generalization of this idea towards arbitrary network of those codes. And we present a case in which we can better this uh, four qubit quantum erasure code proposed in 1997 by demonstrating a rate two thirds code um, to a graph construction. And then we show that asymptotically with a large number of nodes, we can get uh, almost rate one uh, such codes. So, Varnova and others, they considered also encoding graphs, uh, encoding. Uh, but working with graphs with a tree-like structure. And the recovery involves descriptive measurements, which reduces the original graph into some disconnected components. And this may not be so very useful because we may want network restoration after uh, the node loss to the original state. And this is uh, this is going to be useful for us. And these are the two problems. Uh, the, these, these, these ideas motivated us um, towards uh, this problem, considering this problem. So what is a coded quantum network? It is basically a graph, as we know in the graph theoretical uh, setup, set of vertices, edges, each nodes correspond to a qubit each. The edges correspond to virtual links that exist between the nodes. And we can have entangling operations such as CZ or CX and these combinations over the vertices of the graph to obtain the encoder state, which is basically a stabilizer code on the Hilbert space. Uh, which can correct the error and, and the decoding is done for teleportation based on quantum computation ideas. So here is a simple example that I start this motivation. Here is an initial graph uh, before encoding. This is this is given in A. Then the encoded uh, graph with uh, two message nodes and, uh, and and you have six six coded nodes and this is this this sort of setup. And let us say one of the nodes fail, uh, let's say this node four fails in this graph and all edges connected to this node are, are sort of lost. And this results possibly in a mixed state. See, unlike most uh, traditional uh, quantum coding problems, which assumes that you could have one of these errors, you know, X or Y or XC, here we don't make such an assumption, right? Once the node fails, if you look at the rest of the system, it could be the mixed state. And we need to purify this, uh, this, uh, this mixed state right and for which you can bring in an additional qubit and then you have to get this pure state and hopefully to impact this uh, and, and develop recovery mechanisms through the stabilizer code right and this network code is basically an entanglement code and that that's what makes it interesting and uh, and uh, that is the focus of the design so let us uh, see the key idea behind the recovery procedure for a single qubit uh, case and then I will motivate how we can make things interesting where the codes are made local uh, so that it enables uh, um, the use of modified uh, graph state codes for these applications. So let the coded quantum network store this uh, state shy. So let U and V be the Hilbert spaces. So we decompose this complicated Hilbert space, large Hilbert space into, into two spaces one that corresponds to the last qubit and for the rest of the qubits. And this has this particular form. So after the qubit loss, basically we have to trace it over the Hilbert space of the last qubit and this results in a mixed state. And for the stabilizer code, we choose these parameters lambda naught and lambda one to be the same and this lands up to be uh, with this constraint uh, that lambda naught square plus lambda one square equals one because it can be one of these two states. And uh, we choose this to be uh, one upon uh, root two. This is an array, uh, erasure code. So we know the um, uh, location. This is a very important assumption. And this can be uh, practically backed via the quantum non demolition experiment, similar to what one and others did. So we want to design the code such that every code has a Schmidt form in this, uh, in, in this way. Okay, the shy can be decomposed in this uh, Schmidt form. And um, A0 and A1 are the same uh, for every last node, but this B0 and B1 are specific to the, uh, to the different code words. Right? So we transform this, uh, this mixed state row by bringing this qubit in this, uh, in this form. 
uh, in superpostate, and 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 then we basically um, we, we form a composite system, right? And as each element in in row two, right? This is basically a tensor of mu with uh, with v naught and, and, and v one. So since row two is in a product uh, form, uh, we, we would like to form an entire pure state via a unitary uh, operator m, adding some ancillary uh, bits, operating with the unitary, followed by some measurements, and then you discard the ancillary, and then you recover. So the action of m is very very important here. So here we, I'm just describing uh, uh, these four uh, situations where this action of this unitary m could be described. So this m operator cannot transform both of these two uh, states to this state. So therefore, uh, what we would like to do is we transform one of the states uh, where there is an error. Uh, and, and then with this action, with this conjugation operation that we have, uh, we form this, this ensemble, which is uh, row three. Uh, and, and then what we have to do is basically apply the stabilizer and we figure out if there's an error or not. So as you can see, if there is no error, you, you recover the state. If there's an error, you apply the inverse operation and, and uh, post reconciling uh, the measurements from the ancilla and, and then you recover the state. Okay. So let the stabilizer uh, correct one qubit error in this, of this form, right? There is, a, there is an error here and it's an entity on the rest. You add tau ancilla qubits, which is basically n is your code bits and k is your, uh, you know, the message nodes, n minus k would be your tau, which is ancilla qubits. They're in the state zero and corresponding to syndrome length. And you compute the syndrome over the ancilla qubits and you obtain this and you measure the ancilla qubits. And based on the error outcome, you do the inverse operation. So this is a straightly, a fair, fairly straightforward procedure. So the key, Step would be the choice of the operator M based on the stabilizer, the generators of the code. I mean, these are the minimal, um, uh, they call the minimal stabilizer because if these are the minimum set of uh, uh, stabilizers, uh, which, with which you cannot generate other stabilizers from, but the rest of the stabilizers can be generated from these generators. So let's say that the minimum, uh, that the stabilizer generators of the code. It's like a sort of a vector space uh, analogy here, uh, I mean, the, the, the basis analogy here. Now, let shall be the code word of this n qubit uh, stabilizer code generated by these uh, stabilizer generators. You have tau stabilizer generators, and this is the description of this, uh, of this space. So, for every node um, uh, in a zeta, in a, which can be from one to n, there exists a Schmidt decomposition. These states zero, and zeta, and one zeta that correspond to the orthonormal states in the Hilbert space U corresponding to the Fein node. And this, this other correspond to the orthonormal states of W over the rest of the rest of the nodes. So to put in a nutshell, so basically we bring in an operator, uh, we bring the node that we detect a node which is failed, and we add a node with a qubit in the plus state into the quantum network as the that node which uh, is lost. You perform this operation uh, in zeta, is assuming the zeta is a, a failed mode, and then we add the ancilla bits uh, in the state plus for syndrome computation, and, and then using uh, the stabilizer over these qubits, error is uh, basically corrected, and then we discard the ancilla bits and obtain the original state. So these details are given in uh, some of the papers. Most of the material that I'm talking is from our published papers. So um, here is an example. So you can think about a check matrix like this. There is a one terminology, and you can verify that this is the x part, this is the z part of this uh, of this uh, of this code of this graph code. So you can verify that this is a this is the code word. So once the first let's assume that the first node fails, and and then you you you, you form this ensemble here, which is row one comprising of three nodes, then you add one node, and that node is zero plus one upon root two, and that is what we have done, and you get this, uh, this example of row two, and then we perform an operator M, which transforms these states as follows, right? And the details, how to obtain this, this uh, transformation 
is a series of uh, mathematical operations essentially and uh, we say that it, it can have an x error or it can have a y error and that is how these are the two types of errors which we can get for a single uh, node failure case and uh, and according to the different conditions how uh, you can generate this uh, this operator again uh, and the details are there in the fiscal review a paper published in 2020 and applying m on row 2 uh, we get this ensemble and then um, this can be rewritten in this form uh, nicely as uh, basically a phase, phase error on uh, thing shy so now you add two ancillary bits in this state 0 0 and then you compute the syndrome and either you have this state or you have this state and based on the measurement of the 0 0 you get back to the result state otherwise uh, you basically undo this uh, to this operation you do an xe operation to, to recover the state so, so this is the uh, basic idea now stabilizer codes are not uh, local there's a communication cost associated with uh, reaching out to arbitrary nodes the question is can we use the adjacency matrix of the underlying graph to enable local operations in the vicinity of the lost uh, loss mode and so this uh, this motivates us to design something called the modified graph state codes. Before we get into modified graph state codes, I'll briefly touch upon what these graph state codes are. So in the graph state code, uh, basically you have these uh, CZ operations, these control Z operations across these uh, vertices of the graph, and you can you can basically uh, obtain an encode operator and then you can formulate the, the code word. But one of the problems that we uh, when we propose is graph state code uh, in, in Globcom, uh, I think the Globcom 2017. And one of the problems that we had there was it was unable to correct phase errors on the message uh, message bit, and it was able to do the rest of it. And we and and, and, and this graph state code was not local. That that means if you want to choose a particular node, uh, you have to choose stabilizers around the local vicinity of that code, and that probability we did not have, and therefore this motivated us. Uh, alleviate these two problems uh, um, to make it local as well as be able to correct phase errors on the message nodes. So um, the idea is basically to use the CX operation to, so if you have a stabilizer of the graph state code, you conjugate the stabilizer of this graph state code using the controlled X operation and such that you have a transform stabilizer and, and, and which you use for encoding the modified graph state code. And this will require certain conditions on the equivalent parity check matrix of the modified graph state code, and which requires that the the columns essentially, you know, if you look at the failed node and you look at the x comp x part of the failed node and the z part of the failed node, these uh, these columns are non-zero and unique, and and this motivated us to come up with these operations to transform this. So uh, we have this modified graph state codes basically um, as an augmentation to the original uh, uh, graph state code by using the entangled uh, uh, CX operations and then conjugating this over the stabilizer of the graph state code. And with this, uh, interestingly, uh, so the overall encoding operator is essentially um, given by this, this equation. So basically you have the 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 CZ operations that you normally have with the graph state code plus in addition you have the uh, CX operations which are directed operations where the control um, is on the uh, check node and, and the message is on the uh, is, is target is basically message is the target right so here is a simple um, example so this is the original graph and then we have this G prime which is basically the entangled uh, CX operations. Uh, that we control so control CX operations that we want to bring in, and these blue um, are basically the check check nodes, and red are like the message nodes, slightly different than the tunnel graphs that we are familiar with in LDPC terminology. And working out the math and all the details in the paper, we can end up with this, this form of encoder, and this is basically uh, an encode example. And interestingly, check matrix of the modified graph state code can be written in this form, and it is linked to the adjacency uh, matrix of the uh, uh, graph state code. And um, you have probably short of time. So, uh, so the certain conditions that this modified graph state code 
uh, has to satisfy and I, I, I list these conditions f1 f2 and f3 uh, so if check, check degree of every message node should be at least two and there should exist one check mode with respect to which uh, cx is performed uh, so these are some mathematical conditions that need to be satisfied so based on this uh, we can construct a, a local neighborhood based graph state code which can uh, solve this problem um, so I, I'll just briefly highlight these earlier ideas. You have a local operation where we identify fail node and bring a plus state. And then suppose node three has failed in this case, uh, then you uh, obtain this operator um, M3. And, and then you have a stabilizer associated, which is local within three edges away from uh, node three. And you can see through from this matrix, uh, working through the details. And, and basically you figure out uh, which of these um, stabilizers you know can anti commute so that you can detect the fail node and you can correct. Okay, so we have another example for a rate two thirds code, and uh, this is the design. The details are again in the, in the paper. And so to summarize, um, basically the MGS code construction is asymptotically optimal. We, we achieve the singleton bound, and the code coded network design is scalable for arbitrary number of nodes. Uh, even tier of failures. So what we demonstrated here is a complete framework for the single node um, failure and directions. Uh, we have a you know we have a quantum coding theoretic framework to design erasure codes that are local for coded quantum networks. Uh, erasures can be identified as I told you through quantum non-demolition experiments. It will be just to try these using photonics based quantum technologies and two of these, these things which I mentioned uh, could we think about uh, you know, quantum networks at atomic scales, could we do it even at large distances, right? These are really challenging uh, challenges. And with this, I may talk, uh, I think a minute and a half uh, overshot my presentation. Thanks a lot for this uh, interesting talk, Shayan. Um, I have uh, our two standard questions and then we stop the recording. So uh, question number one is, um, uh, well, now I just uh, uh, lost it, so here it is. Uh, what do you think will be the first use case for entanglement assisted communication networks? So a very good question. I think we would like to first demonstrate the, the, the entanglement improvement over say point to point uh, you know, multiple access channels, I mean, I mean, that is I mean, two, two, three links that we have and show that entanglement assistance can help than without it. That is the first case that I would start with. And then with that, we can think about these quantum networks, coded quantum networks that we can demonstrate with the entanglement. And this is where I think entanglement will be really helpful. Uh, and this could be done at, uh, you know, larger distances uh, and also possibly uh, maybe with atom photon sort of interactions that, you know, having networks at a very small scale. Uh, uh, you know, this is, uh, I think, viable in my opinion. And uh, in your domain, what is the major challenge? Um, or you can also point at another domain. You mentioned uh, photonics, for example, as a possible implementation of your ideas. Do you see, uh, like, is this, is this a challenge bridging the gap or is it uh, this challenge defining better codes or? Very good question. Um, so one is, you know, how do we get these uh, controlled gates, controlled operations, working through uh, photonics, right? This is this is a key for realizing these things, and 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 then having these graph states and and you know stable graph states, and if you want to realize, you know, using these graph states and harnessing them quickly, the throughput, the generation of these these states must be quite fast. And I think all these are challenges at the preparation level, at the, at the detection level, and, and, and even at the gate level, essentially. Uh, so these are all, uh, in my opinion, practical challenges and um, you know, to basically have the theory uh, realizable. Uh, 